You know, there are folks that you come across in your life, and when you meet them, you instantly know that's someone special. That is the case with Dre Solberg. In Character Talks, we aim to unearth the hidden gems of human resilience, courage, and growth. We bring you tales of ordinary people who found themselves in extraordinary circumstances and emerged from the crucible of life forever changed. From tales of facing fear head on, to serendipitous encounters that altered destinies, and from travels to distant lands that broadened horizons, to battles fought within, we believe that every experience holds the potential to shape us in profound ways. I'm Chris Christie, and this is Character Talks. I am excited for this next podcast because the first time I met Dre, the first words to describe them were genuine and authentic. Dre's word is compassion. And we go into a deep dive into this podcast of why that word is so important and how that word is being applied to their life on a daily basis. This is a super fun episode. I hope everyone enjoys it. A special note, if you're listening to this podcast on the Mill app, And stay tuned because we've got a little special contest at the end of this for you to win some free merch. So if you are not listening to it on the Mill app, then download the Mill. It's available on both the Apple and Google platforms. Download it, listen to it there, and uh, participate in future podcasts. Here we go. Let's see if we can find Dre, and let's make this happen. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Character Talks. After, seems like, months and months trying to get this person on the podcast, I am super excited, so excited that I wanted to be outside when I did this podcast. So I'm sitting outside on my deck. The audio is probably not very good, but my computer is now covered in pollen. I'm covered in pollen, (laughs) but I needed to be outside for this because it's the first nice day we had. So maybe that's a that's a blessing and perhaps a coincidence, Dre, that you're you're on the podcast and it's a beautiful day here. But welcome, Dre, to Character Talks podcast. Oh, it's an honor. I'm so happy it's happening. Yeah, it's been a couple months, it seems like, that we've been- Yeah, it took us a minute, but, you know, after some email tag we got here, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's been, and it's been fun, and you and I have been talking for months, and yeah, this is also an exciting day because two days ago, we launched The Mill, which is the new app, and you have been, you and a couple other folks have been instrumental with allowing me to bounce ideas off of you and and concepts and thoughts that I've had of how I can make the mill a little bit better. So hopefully, you know, folks that get into the mill, you'll see Dre in there and engage in some more conversations and and keep things going. But yeah, I want to say first, before we even get started, thank you. And you've been super instrumental and so helpful with getting this project off the ground. That's partly why I wanted to have you on on Character Talks. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful and I am very excited to engage with everyone in the mill. All right, so let's dive in. And I don't, I don't give up the word quickly right off the bat. <laughs> so I'm going to let people uh, think because I think sometimes it's fun when they hear a little bit about kind of who you are and, and what you're doing for work and those types of things. I, I, it's fun to think that people might be able to come up with a word on their own of, why, why, I wonder what Grace came up with the <laughs> word. So before we get going, if you want to just give us a the 20,000 foot view or as much as you would like to of who is Dre, what are you doing? What are the types of things that make you smile? Maybe what you do for work, but just kind of give us a little uh, background of who you are. Thank you. I would be happy to. So surprise, surprise. My name is Dre. My pronouns are they, them, and theirs. And I am the founder and primary caregiver for my small business, All Companion Pet Care. And what I do through All Companion Pet Care sounds pretty uh, like you could assume, pet sitting, dog walking, that kind of thing. My specialties, though, are with fear-reactive dogs, disabled individuals, and any other beyond-human individuals who require specialized care. So species who don't typically receive care through, let's say, Rover or other large pet sitting companies We're looking at snakes, we're looking at chinchillas, we're looking at rabbits, horses, anyone and everyone. My passion is to provide specialized care to them and ensure their comfort as well as their guardian's peace of mind, whether they're traveling or whether I'm just taking them on a walk. That's awesome. We've spoken so much and I don't think I recognize the scope. Uh, Mm -hmm. a level of what you do. That's fantastic. And I don't think I had realized the need 
Yeah, but now yeah. looking back and especially with character walk 2023 and the in the walk we've done and the dogs and things that we've met, I see that there was a rescue in Pennsylvania, the Animal Rescue League of Berks County that has a whole kind of animal behavior section to it. You can probably expound on this even more than than I can, but their whole thing is the human animal connection. And it's yes. necessarily just what the animal does to a human, but also the other way around that sometimes when folks abandon their animals Oftentimes, it's just because they, they don't understand how the animal is reacting to certain things, whether it's fear or that type of thing that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. they, they educate the, the human on, here's how to understand your animal. And together, they work out a kind of a behavioral plan that ultimately allows the person then to keep their animal. So they don't have to give the Exactly. Animal. Can you give an instance of maybe an animal that you've, you have worked <laughs> a success story or an example of where you've used that? Yeah, absolutely. I remember once I was starting out, I really centered language that was uh, primarily trauma-informed. I always said my work was trauma-informed, and it still is. Uh, some other terms that I started to use included force-free uh, and working towards fear-free, and all of that essentially just means that I'm centering the individual who I'm caring for their consent, and their autonomy. And so I'm considering that uh, beyond human individuals I'm working with as the thinking, feeling, breathing individuals they are, right? And I shared that to a Facebook group here. I was just letting everyone know, hey, I started this business. I'm just starting out, getting off the ground, trying to jog at this point. And a local guardian reached out to me. And <laughs> also, you may hear my cat in the background. Um, so she reached out to me, and she cares for a fearful and reactive dog. That means that he has really big feelings about the world. And that is often the case, like you were speaking about, when guardians give up on dogs. He's fearful. He doesn't love walks because when he's on walks, he is over aroused. He is just very excited and reacting in a big way to the world. With that being the case, she has not been able to have anyone over for years. She hasn't been able to travel for years. She's been at home caring for this dog, doing everything possible to tailor each day to him which he deserves no less. It is difficult, though, because she started out with his training uh, in a way that's it's referred to as balanced training. And that includes the use of prong collars and e-collars, electric collars, and things like that. And she noticed that <laughs> she was using these tools. She was using an e-collar to assist her pup, support her pup. But ultimately, if you're going to be pinching someone every time they're reacting to the world and expressing themselves freely, they're going to try even harder to express themselves, right? And so his reactivity just grew and grew and grew to the point that Again, she could not have people over anymore. She could not travel. And so we became introduced, started doing what we call parallel walks, where we're literally in an industrial park, opposite sides, walking parallel to one another. And slowly you de decrease that distance. I start tossing treats instead of her just providing the treats. And <laughs> that's where we started. And it has been just about a year and we had our first sitting visit where I actually stayed over with them. I cared for the pups and it was absolutely incredible because once we started, you could see the fearfulness. You could see how he was reacting to the world, how, how difficult it was because not only had he experienced the trauma that comes with an e-collar, he had recently, not long before we met, been attacked by a couple of off-leash dogs, which is an ongoing problem as well. And so he 
was just not okay with the world, which makes sense. And here we are a year later, able to sleep together in a bed and play in the backyard and just have the best time ever with my safety being centered as well as his. And it's just amazing to see how he went from a super tight, tense, upset pup to a loose, wiggly, happy boy. It's fantastic. It's amazing. That has to be one of the most rewarding stories just to, I mean, if that just doesn't make it all worthwhile, a big word for me, I mean, it's tattooed on my wrist is, is Ikigai, which is essentially in the Western translation of this Japanese term is the reason I wake up in the morning. Yes, exactly. If that isn't a reason to wake up in the morning to, to know that you have that kind of impact. Yeah. It's it's an honor. It's amazing the trust that families place in me and specifically the beyond human individuals. It's incredible to see how even after experiencing the worst harm in the world, they still can come around to trust and love. It's an inspiration at best. Yeah. And just the ability that you, you have, and again, I think that's what, well, <laughs> one of the many reasons why you're such a special person, and but the the empathy to be able to recognize, to recognize that. And one of the first things I picked up on was you mentioned getting the pup outside. And I went, oh, you know, isn't that just the, isn't that such a truth for most people? Mm-hmm. You could just spend a couple minutes and just get outside, whether it is something as simple as a, a short little walk or that type of thing. But, but, but then understanding, and this is something that I'm learning is understanding perhaps why people don't get outside. Well, you know, what is the career and, and you're kind of doing that same thing with, with animals and yeah, just taking it to a whole nother level. That, that is a fantastic story. (laughs) Thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) That is very, very cool. So when you're not doing that, what does Dre do for fun? When you're not working, what's occupying your, your time? And I, and I asked because I think people are already going to be able to relate to you in what you've just said, but let's see if we can create some more ways that, People go, oh, yeah, I enjoy doing that too. And and I think when we finally then get into your word, your word will have even that much more connection to folks. So when you're not doing that, what is Dre doing for fun? Oh, you know, at home, caring for my own cats. Um, <laughs> no, for real. We, we work on a lot of training and just spending quality time together, uh, keeping life a lot lighter uh, because... You know, it's not so light everywhere all the time. So we just play a lot, cuddle a lot. But beyond caring for everyone else, I will (laughs) consistently be found outside. I'll be kayaking, biking, snowboarding, ice skating, anything and everything. Um, I am one of those people who is perfectly content waking up at 4 a.m. to watch a summer sunset on a lake or from a mountaintop. Genuinely just want to be outside and camping all the time. And it's amazing because with the role I have now, I can take just about any day that I want for myself. And um, uh, I'm just thinking, I'm I'm breathing a sigh of relief basically because this next week spending a week in a cabin and the entire time I'm just signing off. I'm just spending the entire week kayaking, swimming, enjoying nature for who and uh, what she is and really reconnecting not only with nature, but with myself. And I guess ultimately that's synonymous, but um yeah, just anything to practice mindfulness, anything to stay connected to myself and nature, and um, anything that centers joy and peace, to be honest, whatever I'm feeling that day. That's fantastic. Again, for those listening, we've been friends for a little while, not, not mm-hmm. a long time, but we've also been able to share. I mean, you've seen some of the, some of the down points for me when I've had to cancel podcast mm-hmm. or zoom calls that we've had just when we've been talking about the app for various reasons. And, and I know a little bit of recent jobs and things that you've had that have <laughs> sirs and different things and have kind of taken your life out of balance. And so it was great before we started the podcast, when you and I were, were talking the tone in your voice 
uh, is just completely different than what it was <laughs> six, six months ago. With that in mind, knowing that you know life does create its own obstacles, and a dear friend of mine, Chris Doris, very successful coach and just massively intelligent individual, I love the quote that he says is very simple. It's just ain't bad, just is. And I have used that so many times of it's only <laughs> bad, it's only bad when we perceive it to be bad and we, when we put that tag on it because the reality is it just is. Before we get into your word, last last question will be, where are you right now? And it goes back to what you and I talked about before the podcast started of what space are you in now and did you do anything different? Uh, what what prompted you to kind of help get into the space that you're in right now? Mm. I ultimately wanted to support the community where I could. Granted, yes, I <laughs> was struggling in the job search as uh, the job search goes, but I've always focused on the fact that I was lacking. And as I was navigating that, I focused on, oh, I'm lacking a position, I'm lacking a role. And then my partner actually... <laughs> called me in and shared the abundance that I already embody and encouraged me to really think about, well, what if you started your own business? What if you paved your own way and stopped relying on someone else to define that path for you? And I have absolutely no regrets. It's been fantastic. I really was looking at the fact that I've provided pet care services in the past. Granted, they weren't necessarily trauma-informed. They were always force-free and positive reinforcement-focused, but not trauma-informed quite uh, at that point. Whereas once I started this business and aligned my work with my passion, I have seen that it perfectly aligns with my personal life. So I'm at a point where I feel balanced with my work. It's taught me a lot of <laughs> lessons in general, but primarily lessons about myself. It's let me know that I move through the world in a way where I have unfortunately centered negativity and I have unfortunately felt like I'm not enough a lot of the time. And in that, I've centered everyone else in every other sense. And oddly enough, even though I am providing care to everyone else through my work every single day, I have to regularly stay mindful. I have to regularly check in with myself, care for myself, and in that build a sustainable work-life balance. And I feel like as of the last few weeks specifically, I feel that I am successfully there and experiencing, experiencing that. And I am currently in a place where I am so excited, extremely grateful, and um, actually very hopeful. It's hard though, isn't it? It's hard. To get oh my God. <laughs> Ooh, it's a lot of work every day, all the time. And I know it will never end. So <laughs> for again, those listening, when I first emailed Drake's, I believe I reached out to you mm -hmm. the words that I used, which I think people can probably begin to identify with you. I believe I used the words genuine and authentic. Mm -hmm. Those were the two words. And so with that in mind, what is the word that you've chosen for character talks? I have chosen compassion. And without getting into the Webster's Dictionary of Compassion, <laughs> how do you define de compassion? I define compassion as concern for the well-being of others and uh, centering love in that concern. So rather than it being anxiety-centric, it's more love and joy-centric. Okay. I don't think you're going to see that definition in Webster's. That's a false <laughs> Definitely not. A more no. detailed and um, personal uh, definition of that word, which is fantastic. So have you been practicing compassion? It would, would you say that was your word 
15, if I had asked you 15 years ago, would that be the word that you would have chosen? Oh my gosh, forever and always. I don't know a time where I was not practicing that. And I know it's definitely interchangeable with empathy. Uh, I feel like from very, very young, I was a highly empathetic person and compassionate because stick to the word. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so for you, being compassionate, Kind of like that's part of your DNA. Uh, again, when you look on the website, the first page of the Character Mill website is what defines who you are. Mm-hmm. Is there someone, if we go back then even further than, than 10 years, and of course now we're listening to my dog bark in the background. <laughs> uh, is, there, is there someone or an experience that you had or uh, someone, a mentor or a parent or someone that kind of taught you compassion or showed you compassion or how, I mean, I don't know if we're necessarily... I think as little kids, we I think we we grow up with a genuine curiosity and and compassion, and then the world infiltrates its claws and we deviate away from it a little bit. But so what is there something or someone that really influenced you to really kind of move in the direction you're going and use compassion as an everyday word and essentially your now your your occupation? Yeah. By default, I want to offer up <laughs> names of some family members who have inspired compassion from an early age. And, um, you know, humans are always our default, but I know for me, the individuals who inspired compassion the most and most consistently for me were the beyond human individuals I lived with and I encountered on the street or in the hills. So I'm looking at the dogs who I grew up with. I learned so much from them. I learned to have fun and not take life so seriously. I learned that everyone is a lot more complicated, but in that also a lot more simple than people would let on. And that includes dogs, cats, wolves, giraffes, anyone and everyone of any species, we all have a lot of complex emotions and experiences. And I understood that I didn't know every second of the dogs I lived with. I didn't know every second of their lives. Even though I lived with them, they were still having an experience of their own. They had perspectives of their own. And recognizing that made me realize that all these individuals no matter the species, no matter the experience, human, beyond human, have beautiful, full lives that the next person will never fully comprehend, even if they received a book that wrote down every bit of each of their days for their entire lives, we still would not comprehend that person's perspective. And I found that really beautiful. And In that, I have to give a lot of credit. A lot of credit goes to a rat who I cared for when I was young. Her name was Dahi, and Dahi quickly became my best friend. She was the absolute sweetest, and I was especially excited because my mom was like, absolutely, I'll save the curse words, not, no. Um, we are not bringing a rat into the home. I'm not a fan. I can't deal with their tails. And so little Dre was like, okay, mom, I hear you, but I will be responsible for all of her care. I will support her, all the things. Fast forward, we bring her home and my mom falls in love. And watching this beautiful interspecies relationship blossom that my mom would have denied at any other time of her life. She opened up to love from a rat. And I still find it hard to believe, but she had so much love for Da. He was so excited when she was in her ball or just running around the house and watching not only my mom nurture love for Dahi and Dahi nurture love for my mom and in that nurture a lot of trust one of the dogs I lived with came to clearly love and trust Dahi and vice versa. 
And I would have never expected that. A huge boxer just watching a rat run across the ground and they're coexisting. And so not only do we have a dog and a rat, we have humans. We have three species healthfully coexisting. And it let me know that healthy interspecies relationships are possible and they should and always, or they should always be centered in love and with the well being of everyone um, in mind while building those relationships. Again, another super powerful story. <laughs> Did did da is Dahi a name for something? That where did the name Dahi come from? You know, good question. I played a lot of video games growing up, and uh, I had this friend who actually lived in Ireland, and we were just playing video games one day and shared the name Dahi. Don't even remember the context. I just know it's a Celtic name, and uh, I was like, "Oh my god, that's the name." <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, because I I I too had a rat. And that rat, oh. rat's name was Felix. And Felix went back and forth the country, driving across the country with me, I think, twice. Oh, my goodness. Felix would just perch right on my shoulder as I was driving down the road. So, yes. That I, is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Felix Felix did not have the impact. Because uh, unlike your mom, my mom wanted nothing to do with Felix. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's, that's more so a normal response. That's what I typically see. But that's... <laughs> Yeah, again, and that's that just so it, it's clear then with stories like that on how you've evolved and moved into doing what you're doing now. And and I think compassion is the perfect word. I think, to be honest, I almost knew that was going to be the word that you <laughs> choose before I heard just from our conversations. It's cool because you have created an occupation, you've created a space in your life where you get to practice compassion on the daily like it's just mm -hmm. your, your strength which is practicing one of your strengths pra practicing compassion and you're utilizing it to make the world a little bit better whether it be for an animal for humans that connection between the two but you've created that space not everybody is has that uh, that luxury or ability to do so um could you offer maybe before you were doing all companions could you offer advice or thoughts how could someone else practice compassion on the daily basis when they maybe don't have, they haven't created the situation like you have where you get to do it as, as part of your job? How could someone else practice compassion on the daily? I will say that's an easy one, not to negate the importance of it, but it is relatively easy. It's an each of our interactions. It's how we interact not only with other individuals, again, regardless of species, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, ability, so on and so forth. It's how we regard one another and how we speak to one another, the language we use, how we hold ourselves, how we pay attention to other people and how they hold themselves. And sharing love with the next person, even even if the world tells you there are a thousand and one differences between you two, it's understanding that there are so many more similarities. And even if there aren't the most similarities, the fact that the next person, again, human, beyond human, anyone is thinking, feeling, breathing, and perceiving. They are experiencing their own life and there are so many days, so many moments, so many seconds and experiences that come together to get an individual to where they are. So understanding that, having that past-centric view of someone, understanding that they are now in the present moment. So the past informs you, but they are present and here now, appreciating that. And then knowing that you can have potentially a future interaction if you navigate this present one with compassion, with love, and appreciate the individual in front of you for who they are, not who the world wants to make you believe they are, who they genuinely are, taking the time to get to know what brings them joy. I always ask the people in my life, what brought you joy today? 
It's not how are you. It's not something like that because unfortunately in this world, we're this human centric world, we're encouraged to focus on the lack, what, what we're missing, what missed from the day, what made it not so great. That's typically the default response. So to nurture more of a connection with people, I ask, what brought you joy today? So appreciating the individual ahead of you and not only the individual, you can practice compassion by appreciating the land, appreciating the sky, appreciating water, appreciating that little rock on the ground that looks like a heart, taking time to respect the land, respect the sky, respect the water, and in that express gratitude, you can express gratitude for your past and the fact that it got you to this moment. You can express gratitude for this present moment and all the beauty that exists within and beyond you. And then in that, express gratitude for the amazing future that, yes, you could plan for, but you really have no idea how it's going to turn out. And that's so exciting. So why not build something great right now? Yeah, very cool. And you're right. I I think it is it is so easy. That was a, an easy question, I guess, especially <laughs> to someone like yourself. And it goes on with the conversation I was having with someone before, prior to our doing the podcast here, was that that's one of my goals with The Mill is to get people outside and to go on adventures because when people take the time to self-reflect and then hold themselves accountable for who am I as a person and what defines me, when we take time to do that, and we grow that character from within, then I think innately we are, as human beings, we're meant to care. We're meant to love. We're meant to heal. We're we're meant to do those things. As you said, it's those outside influences that kind of get in the way and the world tells us Mm -hmm. we're supposed to think and how we're supposed to feel. And it's not necessarily, although it's becoming a little bit more mainstream, to it's okay to feel the way you want to feel, which I think is hugely important, that I think the more people hold themselves, I don't want to say accountable because that's, that's like you did something wrong, but just get to know who they are. Then I think they become more aware of their actions. And when they, when they do that, I think compassion becomes an easier word for you. It's, it's, e- it's easier for me. I think I'm, I'm getting there and I'm growing every day, but there were certainly times in my life where I, I wouldn't say compassion was, was high on my list, but it's, it has gotten that way, but through work like you have done, but yeah, I think innately, wouldn't it be wonderful to be living in a world where empathy, compassion, love were just mainstream? Exactly. Absolutely. And I will clarify, it's easy to answer, but not always easy to practice. Absolutely. Again, yeah, yeah. the Agreed. world being Agreed. the way it is, it uh, it takes a lot of work on the daily. And again, this is a lifelong practice. This never ends. <laughs> to practice compassion each day. It's uh, not an easy one. And that's why I always have to remind myself discomfort is where I grow. Discomfort is where we grow. That is where great change happens and sprinkle in some love, joy, and peace. Voila, the greatest change we'll ever see. Yeah. You know, when I when I was giving uh, instructional stuff and even with, uh, when the, with the people that I work with in the Character Institute, the thought that I always come back to is, you know, when you learn something new, if it feels right, it's wrong. <laughs> it feels it's a right. good it, way to live. Absolutely. It, yeah. it feels right. You didn't, you didn't really make a change. Yep. You got to think you got to be, feel, you got to be uncomfortable. Little, to move forward. It should feel a little uncomfortable, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's a, a golf swing or your approach to how you interact with others. If it's, you know, if it's not, uh, if it doesn't feel a little strange, you're not really ultimately. Exactly. Strange, so. All <laughs> right. Like So going back to, because ultimately our, you know, the goal of the mill is to get people outside and on adventures. How do you define adventure? Mm, Good question. Adventure to me is a chance to enjoy experience and extend that compassion to the land around you. All right. Keep, keep going. Keep like, Oh, keep, keep like, elaborating. Like, like how, how I oh, so let, it, let me, well, let me ask the next question. Cause it may, they maybe perhaps they'll go. Okay. Hand hand. Like I hate the word bucket list. Oh yes. I, no. I did. Mm-hmm. I have to, 
the bucket list is I'm going to kick the bucket. Well, that, boy, if that doesn't mm -mm. positivity. And um, so one of the words that we're, we're focusing on, and, and actually it's a future project, is I, it's my life list. It's the things I want to do during my life. Ooh. And so what's on your life list? What's something that you, you want to do? What's, what's an adventure for mm. you haven't done yet that may be on your life list? Hmm. I know that you had mentioned accessibility and I had mentioned respect for the land. With that being the case, I find it difficult to just generally say I'd want to travel somewhere because I don't want to perpetuate any kind of harm. I don't want to negatively impact indigenous populations, whether they're humans who are indigenous to the land or beyond human individuals who are indigenous to the land or plants. I just want to always stay conscious of who I am affecting through my adventure. With that being the case, I have a difficult time because I want to surf, but I don't want to negatively impact any marine species by causing confusion or instilling any kind of fear. I I struggle with that because my uh, dad really enjoys boating. I have a hard time getting on a boat and knowing that we are quite literally disrupting the natural state of the lake. And with that being the case, again, it makes it difficult to just say, oh, I want to travel the world. Even though uh, I'm like anyone else, I want to travel the world. I want to see these beautiful places. I want to encounter these amazing communities and uh, individuals. Yet, adventure for me at this point looks like switching up my day slightly to go to the park to watch a sunset I wouldn't otherwise watch because I would typically be working. Or it looks like going to a new part of the city and keeping an eye out for a little ecosystem that seems to exist. So it might be a little mossy spot and watching the ants and watching everyone move around and see that their life is inherently adventurous. I think adventure for me at this point is surrounding myself with the appreciation and gratitude for the adventure that everyone else seems to seems to live. And once I do feel comfortable, I find that adventure does look like travel, but it's more localized. It's mm -hmm. looking like going to northern Minnesota, not far from where I live, and traveling the shore, going camping, going backpacking, and relying on me, myself, and I, as well as nature, to survive and thrive through a week. It's it's reconnecting with myself, and it's an adventure every day, just staying mindful and staying conscious and practicing all that we spoke about. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I didn't expect that answer or <laughs> answer at the time. And it really, the thought that keeps popping into my head is when we talk about adventure, oftentimes, again, the world tells us that we're adventure is supposed to be climbing Mount Everest or right. doing something crazy. And one thing that we stress with the mill is an adventure is whatever the adventure is for that person. And exactly it, so many shapes and forms. That's why it's such a huge umbrella that adventure can mean anything to someone. And ultimately if that adventure makes you smile, it makes you feel a little bit better and causes you to perhaps think about your character a little bit, then that's the adventure. Like that's mm -hmm. the thing about it. And, uh, you know, not only I was uh, again, having a conversation before and I mentioned, he said the idea of character and, you know, it's not, people aren't thinking about character as much. And although we probably should be. And I said, yeah, I mean, ultimately I want to make the word character mainstream. Mm -hmm. I want to make that word. Cause right now, if you do hashtag character, all you get is a bunch of Disney characters. <laughs> You know, like that's a, that's a problem. And part of it is that's why I'm so glad you said that because I hope people will recognize when they listen to this character talks that 
adventure is whatever that adventure is for you. Exactly. It can, it can be, be in the house. It can be up the street. You'll see a lot of people across the world, but that's not necessary. Yeah. It can be vastly different for each person. Mm-hmm. Mm. Exactly. So that's fantastic. So last thing as we wind down, is there a, a final thought or something that you would like to share with the folks that are listening to Character Talks, whether they're in the mill, in the mill app, or whether they're listening to it on some other platform? Is there something that you would like to leave, leave the folks with some final thought? I just want to encourage as much love and peace in this world as possible. So I really, the only thing I could imagine leaving people with is an expression of gratitude for their time and energy, taking the time to hear me, hear you, and center themselves, center their learning adventure, and uh, taking that time to stay mindful each day. That's that's not an easy feat. It's not an easy feat to choose a podcast over a TV show. It's not easy to focus on oneself in this very distracting world in general. So thank you to anyone and everyone who listens. Uh, thank you, Chris, for this opportunity. I'm extremely grateful for not only this chance to speak with you, but for the opportunity to be your friend and regularly witness ups, downs, all arounds of your life and share mine with you. And uh, you've been easily the most inspirational and amazing mentor and friend. And um, I'm grateful for this space. I really do hope people genuinely heard all that I shared and said set a goal to practice compassion for all beings and for the land every single day. Well, thank you for those kind words, Dre. And I was, as you were saying that, I was thinking, it seems like every conversation that we have, whether short or long, when I get done, I feel like I'm just a better person. (laughs) You You know, it's just, I think, again, listening to your words and, and feeling your energy and how you express it, uh, you know, you just feel like you're a better person when you are, when you are around someone, someone like you. And so the people that are your clients are very, very fortunate to have you in their lives. And I hope people will, you know, listen to this podcast, but, and I, I hope they'll almost listen to it a couple of times because I, and that's what I'm going to end up doing because I think there was so much in it yet expressed in such a calm way that I, I hope people get a chance to listen to it a number of times. And I'm so glad that we both were <laughs> persistent in, <laughs> in making this finally come to fruition and happen because there, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of love and a lot of thoughts in here. And again, the key word being compassion, if we practice it on the, on the daily basis, then I, I think the world becomes a better place for, for all of us. So Dre, again, thank you so much for joining us on Character Cox and, and good luck with everything. Thank you so much. You were having me leave with a major smile. So thank you too. I'm glad I could be here. All right. Thank you to Dre Solberg for that podcast. During that podcast, I got thinking so many different times of how I could perhaps have a bit more compassion in my life. The way Dre applies compassion to everything they do during their day uh, with their all companion pet care Uh, It's just absolutely inspiring. So thank you, Dre. I'll include all the notes down below for to be in touch with Dre if you have any questions. If you've not, if you like this podcast, uh, we invite you to whatever platform you're listening to, to like it and follow us, uh, maybe write some reviews. And if you're listening to this podcast on The Mill, within The Mill app, then stay tuned. We've got something special for you. And if you haven't, if you're not listening to it on The Mill, then we invite you to download The Mill. It's available on all the Apple and Google stores. In Google, it's called The Mill. In Apple, it's called The Character Mill Dash The Mill. But download it. Come check it out. It's, a, it's the new social media where you can come in with a smile and leave with a smile and share fun stuff that made you smile that day and get inspired to go on more adventures. And let's go build some character through more adventures. So check it out. Stream on me.
Thanks so much again for listening. We look forward to seeing you at the next podcast. Get just a little bit wet. A bump bump she do. A bump bump she do. Wow. First of all, thank you so much for listening to this podcast on the Mill app. Your involvement with the app and your contribution through posts is what's going to make this community so much more special. So please feel free to dive in on a daily basis and share what's going on in your world and things that make you smile. So for those that have listening to it on the mill, we got a special contest. Chris Doris, who is a very, very successful coach, he is referred to as the mental toughness coach, has written a number of books, one of which I read on a daily basis. So if you are listening to this and if you DM us, either DM through the through the app, DM us on any of our social media platforms or email chris at thecharactermill.com. The first three people that do that, that mention this podcast, we will send you a copy of Chris Doris's book, which you will absolutely enjoy. And I use it as a way of starting every single day. Uh, it's, way I, it's part of my morning routine is reading uh, just a single page. Uh, it gets me into the right frame of mind and really makes every day, as Chris refers it to, the best damn day of my life. So be sure to check it out. DM me any of the social media platforms or email me chris at thecharactermill.com. First three people get a free book. Thanks.